The idea of integrity instantly brings to mind an image of Mahatma Gandhi. To me, he embodied the word in his practices, in his speech, and in the way he carried himself through life. I love Gandhi. When I was a high school teacher in a private boarding school, I dressed as Gandhi for Halloween when I had to chaperone a dance in a not so subtle gesture. The word integrity possesses other words inside of it for me. The word integral, which is vital, it reminds me of keeping it together. Just like the integrity of my car or the way it was built or an airplane that I'm riding in is guaranteed to get me from point A to point B safely. The word integrity also has the word gritty for me. And that is the gumption to stand up for what I believe in. Watching my thoughts is a part of integrity. I need to keep my pride and conceit, my anger and impatience, the idea of intolerance in check at all times. Gandhi was a practitioner of nonviolence. There was a story of him being asked, if you saw a child in a stroller and a poisonous snake was finding its way to that child, would you kill the snake? And Gandhi said, no. I stand up for my beliefs and my values. I believe in clear communication that it's really important to have eye contact and to be able to see body language with the people I'm communicating with. I feel like texting is the killer of communication and the demise of relationships. I talk to people every day about relationships and when they let me know the communication is not going right, I ask them, are you texting? Are you seeing this person in person? Or at least having a video chat? Clear communication face to face is integral for me in communication. I have a story about my relationship with the word integrity that I want to share with you. Years ago, I got this little deck of angel cards. They're just little images of angels with a single word. Maybe joy, happiness, love, peace. Well, I decided to invite some friends over for New Year's Eve to celebrate with me decades ago when I lived in a little three-floor walk-up in Mesa, Arizona. I invited everybody to sit around the table. I pulled out my angel cards and I spread them on the table and I instructed everybody to choose a card. They pulled cards and cards with great words were coming up and when it was my turn to choose a card I went to pick and mine was integrity. I felt myself sinking. What was I doing wrong, I wondered. Why was I getting integrity as my word when my friends were getting all these positive, happy words? I decided to roll my sleeves up and really work it. I pulled out my scissors, my glue stick, a piece of cardboard, and a bunch of magazines, and I started constructing a vision board. Right in the middle of it, I put the word integrity. The next year came, and I invited a lot of the same friends over. This had already become kind of a joke that integrity was my word for the year because we would check in with each other and say, hey, how's your word going? So there we were sitting at the table, cards spread out, and I always let my guests go first. They were picking their cards and turning them over and sharing the words. And when it was my turn, it was as if no one was breathing. I was shaking a little bit and I reached out to pull my card slid it across the table to me face down. I knew I could hear their thoughts. Wonder what the card is. I flipped it over and there it was. Integrity. For the second year in a row. I looked over at the mantle of my vision board with the word integrity across the middle and I thought, what am I doing wrong? I just wanted everyone to leave. I wanted to go in my room. I wanted to go under the bed and just hide 
for the next six weeks, I didn't want to talk to anyone. Another year went by. During the year, I talked to my friends and I said, what is it? Why do you think I got integrity for the second time? And one of my friends said, that's because integrity is your middle name. I took it in. I let it soak in. So the third year comes, New Year's Eve. I decide to fast all day. I decide to meditate. I was invited, though, to go to a little celebration at a studio where I was teaching meditation and drumming at the time. So there I was. I walked in the lobby, and people had already gathered and started to go into the big room for the workshop celebration for New Year's. And the facilitator called out to me, Hey, choose an angel card from the little bowl on your way in. I had totally forgotten that we kept the same deck of angel cards in a bowl on the desk in our lobby. So there I was, face to face, with a bowl of cosmic cereal waiting for me. I reached in to pull a card, and believe it or not, it was integrity. I freaked out. I threw it back in. I spun around, and I thought, whoa, this can't be happening. And the little kid inside of me was going, do over, do over. So I did. I went back over to the desk, stirred it up, pulled a card. It was integrity for the second time in a row that night. I threw it back. I called out to the studio and said, hey, I got to go out to my car and get some drums. I'll be right back. So I went out, I came in, and I thought, I'm just going to pick a card on my way in casually. I'm not even going to look at it until I get in the room. So that's what I did. And when I got in there, I turned it over. It was integrity again. I decided, wow, I have to own this. I decided not to tell anyone about the story. Was that integrity? And I decided also that I would work it as if it was the very first time again. We have to ask ourselves on a daily basis, how can we embody the concept of integrity? We have to relate to it directly in our daily habits, and with our follow-through. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. This is integrity to me.